Hey everyone, this lesson is on an overview of fungal skin infections or otherwise known as tinea infections. So in this lesson we're going to talk about a variety of different tinea infections. We're going to go over their clinical presentation, how we diagnose them, and finally how we treat them. So tinea infections are infections with fungi known as dermatophytes, and they come from the genus trichophyton or epidermophyton. And here are the images of those trichophyton and epidermophyton. Now, the pathophysiology of tinea infections involves the fungi metabolizing the protein keratin in our skin, nails, and hair. This is how they actually present and why they uh, actually look the way they do. Because fungi metabolize keratin, it leads to lesions, scarring, brittleness of the nails, and dryness, that type of clinical picture. Now, the tinea infections are actually named depending on body location. If there is a tinea infection on the trunk, it's known as tinea corporis. If it's an infection on the feet, it's tinea pedis. If it's an infection on the head, it's tinea capitis. If it's an infection of the groin, it's tinea curis. And if it's an infection of the nail, it's tinea unguum. So we're gonna talk about each of these in more detail in the next couple slides. So the first one we're gonna talk about is tinea pedis, otherwise known as athlete's foot. This is probably a very common one that many people know about and probably have had. It is the most common dermatophyte infection, and it presents in a few different uh, clinical presentations. The first one and the most common presentation is an interdigital tinea pedis. Uh, this is the most common presentation. It's puritic, it's erythematous, and scaly. So we can see in this image here, again, it's very scaly looking, and this can be quite itchy for patients. Then another presentation is a hyperkeratotic presentation. Again, this one's erythematous, but mostly involves the soles of the feet. And the other one is a vesicular bolus eruption. And again, this can be uh, puritic, so itchy, but also very painful, and it happens on the medial foot. So interdigital, so between the toes, hyperkeratotic is normally on the soles of the feet, and then a vesicular bolus eruption occurs on the medial foot. So again, if we take a look at this image here, we can see the noticeable scaling in this interdigital presentation. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is tinea corporis. Tinea corporis is also known as ringworm. Again, this one affects the trunk. So when we say trunk, it really basically means anywhere on the body except the hands, the feet, the groin, or the face. And this one is also puritic. And as you can see in the image, it's a circular oval in shape. And it too is also scaling patch or plaque. So it's a patch or plaque. Patch is a, a flat surface or flat lesion that's greater than one centimeter. Plaque is a raised lesion greater than one centimeter. And it spreads centrifugally. So it really means that it spreads from the inside outward so it can, can continually get larger and larger from its central location. So again we take a look at the image here. It's a demarcated, very well demarcated circle or oval and when we take a look at the lesion itself it's scaling patch or plaque. The next presentation we're going to talk about is tinea capitis. Tinea capitis is a fungal infection of the head and an easy way to remember this is capitis cap. So you can think of the cap at the top of your head or you can put a, you put a cap or baseball cap on your head. So this is how you can remember tinea capitis is an infection of the head. And this leads to uh, leads to hair loss. And it it too is also puritic in scaling. And this one is actually uh, more related to a direct contact transmission. So if one person's got tinea capitis, you can actually have um, a transmission from that person to another individual um, that can have another tinea capitis. So again, you see this patchy hair loss with this uh, characteristic scaling appearance. The next presentation we're going to talk about is tinea curis. Tinea curis is a fungal infection of the groin area. And this is commonly known as jock itch. And this affects men more than women. And what happens generally in this presentation is that it begins on the medial thigh, so the inner sides of the thighs, and it also spreads centrifugally. So it spreads from this, its center outwards. It's also erythematous and elevated, so it becomes well demarcated because of this. And it has associated 
factors involved. One is excessive sweating. So a lot of times this is why it's a jock itch. Sometimes in men or um, someone that's very active, they get very they can become very sweaty in that area and it can lead to this jock itch. Another associated factor is diabetes and obesity and also immunodeficiency. So all these can relate to getting jock itch or recurrent jock itch or recurrent tinea curis. And the last presentation we're going to talk about is tineungium. And this one is basically a fungal infection of the nail. I have an entire uh, lecture on this uh, topic if you want more information. It's also called onychomycosis. It is basically a crumbling, brittle nail just because the fungi is actually digesting away the nail itself. And it leads to a yellowish, opaque nail. And you also, if you're to take a look underneath the nail, you get subungual hyperkeratotic debris. So now that we've seen a variety of clinical presentations of tinea infections, how do we make the diagnosis? The diagnosis involves doing a KOH preparation of skin scrapings. And what you would see is you would visualize segmented hyphae. So you'd see an image like this and you would see these segmented hyphae like so. And a lot of times we don't do this. We may just do a clinical uh, diagnosis of the uh, of the tinea infection. So once we made the diagnosis, how do we treat it? Treatment typically involves topical antifungals or medications with azole at the end of their name, the azole suffix. And you can think of medications like fluconazole. And another one might be butenafine. So majority of majority of cases and a majority of Tinea infections are treated with topical antifungals. But there are two special cases I want you to think about, and I'll tell you a way to remember them in a moment. So the two special cases are tinea capitis. In tinea capitis, so the top of your head, we're going to typically use uh, terbinafine or griseofulvin. And the second one is tinea unguums, or the fungal infection of the nail. And we're going to generally either use an oral antifungal or Efficonazole uh, for a very long period of time, about 48 weeks. So a lot of times we've been moving away from oral antifungals just because of some liver toxicity issues. So we're more going toward efficonazole, which is also a topical treatment, but it's a sp more special topical treatment for tinea unguum. So these are the two special cases. And I told you I'd tell you a way to remember them, that the top of your head and your fingers. So they're basically the extremes, right? So the top of your head is the, the highest up. You're going to, it's basically the extreme of your height and all the way down at the bottom of your feet at the tip of your toes is the other special case. And those are the two uh, types of fungal infections that you're going to have to use something else other than just the typical uh, topical antifungals. And um, if you also want to learn more about other dermatology conditions, please check out my dermatology playlist. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time.